And our next speaker is uh, Jia Yi Kang uh, from KU Leuven. Um, she's going to talk about something that you know, has been in the air for a long time, but she had a very interesting <coughs> idea on, poly, uh, on the use of polyfunction to um, um, improve bootstrapping for certain uh, plain text modules. So Jay, please. Thanks for the introduction, Ro. Uh, so I'm Jia Yi, and I'd like to talk about our theoretical study on polynomial functions modular p to the power of e and its application in accelerating bootstrapping. This is a joint work with Robin Hillen, Ilya Ilyashenko, and Frederick Verkauteren. Robin is also here today. Uh, so let's start by linking the two parts, uh, polyfunctions and bootstrapping. Bootstrapping is an operation in homomorphic encryption that reduces noise. For schemes such as BGV and BFV, it has two components linear transformations and the digit removal procedure. Since the latter is three to 50 times more expensive than the former, we say the digit removal procedure is the true bottleneck in bootstrapping. And the main building block of digit removal procedure is called the digit extraction function, which are instances of polynomial functions modular p to the power of e or in this talk, we call them polyfunctions in short. So uh, polyfunctions, by definition, they are just polynomial mappings uh, modular p to the power of e. And this polynomial is called a representation of this polyfunction. So uh, we use the upper letter, we use the upper letter for uppercase letter for the representation, like the polynomial, and the, the lowercase letter for the function it induces. Uh, then uh, when E equals to one, in this special case, every function over a field is a polyfunction, and the representation can be easily obtained via the interpolation method. In general, however, this does not necessarily hold, which makes this prob uh, problem more interesting. So in our work, we perform a systematic study of polyfunctions. Namely, we answer the following three questions. First, how to determine whether a given function is a polyfunction? Second, for the given polyfunction, how to find a representation of it? Moreover, as we will see, the representation of a polyfunction is always non-unique. So how can we find representations that are more homomorphic encryption friendly? By that we mean a polynomial of lower multiplicative depths or whose evaluation requires fewer scalar and non-scalar multiplications. So with the above insights, we accelerate, uh, we optimize the digit extraction function and also the digit removal procedure, hence accelerating bootstrapping as a whole. Okay, so in our definition, the digit extraction function maps every element to its least significant digit in the symmetric digit composition. And this least significant digit uh, is again regarded as a polynomial, uh, uh, as an element modular p to the power of e. So using our um, polyfunction representation terminology, this function is a polyfunction. And previous studies just gives us different methods to find representations of this polyfunction. So for convenience in this talk, we use lowercase letter g with a subscript e to denote the digit extraction function modular p to the power of e when p is explicit. And uh, following the convention, we use upper letter to denote its representation. Now I'd like to give an example. So when p equals to two and e equals to eight, Halevi and Shup 
found this representation of depth seven. Later, Chen and Han re uh, improves it with a representation of depth three. Um, and then we realize the difference between these two polynomials actually has non-zero coefficients. At the same time, they maps every element into zero modulo p to the power p. So such a polynomial is called a null polynomial modulo p to the power p. Basically, if we start from any representation and then we add a null polynomial to this representation, it will change the coefficients of this polynomial, but not the function it represents. Okay, therefore, uh, if we can find the set of all null polynomials modular p to the power of e, then starting from any representation of the digit extraction function, Halevi Shup or Chen Han, using the set of all null polynomials, we can easily con construct the complete representations for the digit extraction function. And then we can select representations that are more homomorphic encryption friendly. So now we explain more about the set of all new polynomials modular p to the power p. They are most easily characterized in the falling factorial basis. So this is a definition of a falling factorial polynomial. And we realize the evaluation of this falling factorial falling factorial polynomial at any integer is always divisible by i factorial. Therefore, if i is large enough such that the periodic evaluation of this i factorial is no lower than e, then this falling factorial polynomial will already become a new polynomial. Uh, otherwise, if i is lower, then we will need to multiply some powers of p in front to make the whole now modular p to the power of e. And it has been shown that any now polynomial is a linear combination of polynomials from these two categories. So before we proceed, we still need one more uh, definition. So we denote the smallest i that satisfy this condition as mu p to the power of e. Namely, x mu p to the power of e is the Munich null polynomial of the lowest degree. Then, starting from uh, any representation of, of polyfunction, we can perform the Euclidean division using this monic now polynomial x mu p to the power of e. And this remainder, x pr uh, f prime x, is guaranteed to be another representation of the same polyfunction, but it has degree lower than mu p to the power of e. So this gives us an estimate of the lowest degree representation that you can find for any polyfunction. Then back to our specific case of digit extraction function. We have proved that uh, Chen Han representation already has the minimal degree, p minus one, e minus one plus one. This being said, we can't find any representation that has lower degree than Chen Han representation. However, this is not yet the end of the story. Still, we can search for representations that are homomorphic encryption friendly in the sense that it allows for evaluation with fewer scalar and non-scalar multiplications. So our first improvement uh, uses the fact that digit extraction is a symmetric function. And we show in our paper that for every symmetric function, we can find sparse representations containing only odd or even exponent terms. For example, 
for p greater than 2, we can start from Chen Han polynomial here and then eliminate all the even exponent terms to get a sparse representation containing only odd exponent terms. Then for p equals to 2, the, the construction would be more tricky and we refer interested audience to our paper. Uh, then using this trick in compared to evaluating Chen Han polynomial, we reduce the number of non-scalar multiplication by a factor of square root of 2 and the number of scalar multiplication by a factor of 2. Our second uh, improvement uses lattice. Here we interpret polynomials as its coefficient vectors. Then the null polynomials with degree bound n actually forms an n plus 1 dimensional lattice. Here we visualize a two dimensional lattice formed by these black dots. Then starting from any representation of the, uh, of the digit extraction function GE, solving the closest vector problem will give us the closest null polynomial OX and their difference GE prime is guaranteed to have lower coefficients, I mean smaller coefficients in the L2 norm. So um, we back to our earlier example of P equals to 2 and E equals to 8 for digit extraction. Then our previous two improvement results in this representation containing only even exponent terms and has uh, less uh, and has smaller coefficients. So this will allow a more efficient homomorphic evaluation strategy and uh, with less noise growth. Our third improvement uses function composition. Basically, to evaluate the digit extraction function modulo p to the power of e, here when the e is really large, it can be done in two steps. Step one, we pick some e prime, which is lower than e, and we evaluate this uh, function modulo p to the power of e prime. Step two, we evaluate the digit extraction function g with the original large modulus p to the power of e. However, we only consider the relevant domain, which is the range of step one. So this range of step one is a subset of integers modulo p to the power of e. Therefore, over this subset, there are more null polynomials defined which we can use to bring the representation of the second step even lower. So um, we can bring it really lower, like the degree bound is way, way even we can see it from the degree bound. And then uh, in compared with Chen Han, we actually reduce the order of non-scalar multiplications from square root of E to quadruple root of E and the number of scalar multiplication from E to square root of E. At the same time, however, for each function composition, we also pay a price of increasing the multiplicative depths by a factor of approximately log 2p. So this interesting trade-off stops us from doing function composition infinite times to reduce the complexity. And we give another example to, uh, for representing the digit extraction modulo 2 to the power of 25. In step 1, we pick a lower e prime equals to 8, and then we can use the earlier um, polynomial we found for digit extraction modulo 2 to the power of 8. Then step 2, we use uh, digit extraction modulo 2 to the power of 25, but only over the range of step 1. As we can see, the degree is very low, like as low as 5. Here in this example, we are already use, we already combine this with the lattice trick. So the coefficients 
are remarkably small, especially considering they are actually defined modulo 2 to the power of 25. Okay, then beside from optimizing the digit extraction function, we also optimize the digit removal procedure in bootstrapping. So consider any, at any integer w modulo p to the power of e. The goal of digit removal is to zero-rise the least significant v digits. This requires us to extract these digits w0 up to w v1, uh, v minus 1, one by one. Meanwhile, to control the depth of this, boot, uh, of this uh, digit removal procedure, we actually need more than v digit extractions. For example, to extract the second least significant digit, w1, uh, this one, it would be natural to say we use the difference between w and w0, but computing w0 already consumes high multiplicative depths. Therefore, it would be wiser to use the difference between w and this uh, w0 one, whose computation requires less multiplicative depths than w0, but is still sufficient for the extraction of second least significant digit. Similarly, like all these other expressions are used for extracting all the other least significant digits while maintaining the depths. So in compared to the earlier Ch Halevi Shup Chen Han approach, in realizing digit removal, we have three main differences. First, we exclusively used our optimized representations for the digit uh, extraction function. Second, we try to reuse these representations as much as possible. And also, we evaluate multiple, simu uh, multiple polynomials simultaneously in the same point using the baby step giant step technique. Now, I'd like to show some uh, implementation results. First, um, to for for uh, lower values of e, such as 15, 6, and 4, we apply all our optimization tricks except the function composition. And then, uh, for example, when p equals to 2, 0 rising the least significant 7 digits in, like, out of 15 in this digit removal procedure using our optimization will bring us a speed up of 2.6 in compared with the state of art implementation which already incorporating Chen Han optimization. Uh, we also test our function composition trick uh, for digit removal. For example, when p equals to 2, consider uh, e equals to 59, that's a rather large number in compared to earlier e's. And then in first step, we choose e prime equals to 16. And then in second step, we use representations like over the range of first step. This gives us a digit removal speed up factor of 2.8. Okay, so now I'd like to conclude my talk and our work. Basically, we speed up bootstrapping for BGV and BFV by optimizing the digit extraction function and the digit removal procedure. Uh, these optimizations are only possible due to the existence of non-trivial null polynomials. And we believe the polynomials modular p to the power of e are also of independent interest, and we look forward to see more applications in cryptography. And thank you very much. Thank you, Jay. Um, so we have time for questions, uh, please.
Uh, thank you for the interesting talk. So, thank you. so, so uh, uh, have you shown that uh, the polynomial you found it is uh, optimal in some sense, or or, or uh, is there any further uh, the room for the further improvement? Uh, thank you. Actually, uh, it's a very good question, and we try to. Uh, let's come back to the complete representations. Yes, mm -hmm. this is a slide I need. Mm -hmm. So these representations, mm -hmm. actually, they somehow form an equivalent class, mm -hmm. and then we try to pick up useful mm -hmm. representations yes, yeah. from it. And we are hope, uh, of course, as we have shown, these representations are more HE friendly than others, mm -hmm. but there's no final conclusion saying there, are, there does not exist any better patterns. Uh -huh. Actually, like by saying the most optimal, we have to come back to the definition, like our definition of HE friendly as well. It has two criteria uh, for the, f the first one, lower multiplicative depths and second one fewer scalar and non-scalar mm. multiplications mm. they are not even like sometimes they are not even mm. uh, going towards the same direction mm. like they can even be a bit contradictory mm. yeah but there is no final conclusion to say that that one must be the optimal yeah mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Nice. thank mm -hmm. you thank you so did, did you have a question Thank you for a nice talk. I, I have just a quick question. Yeah. Uh, I'm wondering if it is possible to extend this result to non power, non like a prime power case. Yes. Uh, so for prime power, you mean not for p to the power of e, yes. but for other like composite modulus. Yes, yes, exactly. So it's um, there are already uh, like this work has been done by other mathematicians as well. Like they already have shown how to consider uh, now polynomials modulo composite uh, composite number. So it, it's, the idea are still the same. Like for composite polynomials, we just need to have this factor for every uh, prime factor of it. Like to make every prime factor null, and then it will be now modulo this composite modulus. And I believe that's the state of art result for uh, composite module. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Thanks. Excellent. If there are no other questions, I propose to thank the speaker and uh, enter the break. I, I will talk about this in a second. Let's thank the speaker first.